In the early 1970s, our country was rocked by presidential scandal. After a security guard botched a burglary in a D.C. hotel, the American public learned the name Watergate. It was a long, drawn-out political catastrophe that led to President Richard Nixon's downfall. That because of the Watergate matter, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. While Nixon wasn't the man behind the burglary, he was involved in the cover-up. And as we all know, the cover-up is worse than the crime. Back then, an enterprising press corps held our political leaders' feet to the fire. Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein exposed the president and his role in the containment of the scandal. Must have been nice. The media actually trying to hold the president accountable for the actions of those around him. Now fast forward 50 years to today, and we're looking at a drastically different media landscape. Rather than cover the crimes of political players, they're doing everything they can to cover them up. Because we're witnessing today one of the biggest containment operations in American history, a censorship campaign to cover up for one of the most corrupt first families in American history and to sway an election. Back in October of 2020, the New York Post gave us our October surprise. Damaging emails, text messages, and photos of Joe Biden's son, Hunter, striking up deals and raking in millions of just dirty, sketchy foreign cash when his father was vice president. Using Joe Biden as a cash register for the family, Hunter Biden was the bag man, and he put our national security at risk at the taxpayer's expense. And when those leaks out of the Hunter laptop came out, we covered them. We brought you the facts. But the media, big tech, along with the Biden campaign and, of course, the Washington swamp just swooped in and tried to cover it all up. Hey, they had an election to win. But now, Hunter could be on the verge of being indicted for tax fraud and maybe money laundering and illegal lobbying. Two weeks ago, the New York Times admitted that Hunter's laptop was, in fact, real. This came after the media spent over a year spinning the laptop as Russia disinformation. The Washington Post, at the time, had even called the thing the Hunter Biden non-scandal. But it looks like things are changing today. And a bombshell release, the Washington Post, joined the New York Times in authenticating Hunter's laptop. Not only did they acknowledge the laptop from hell is real, but they confirmed what we've been saying all along. The Biden family, Joe's son and Joe's brother, were raking in millions of dollars from Chinese tycoons tied to China's military and tied to the Chinese Communist Party, confirming they were paid almost $5 million by a Chinese energy conglomerate, CEFC, that was acting as the arm of China's Belt and Road Initiative, an insidious and corrupt thrust into the world and a threat to U.S. national security, proving that dirty Chinese money went directly into bank accounts owned by Hunter and Joe's brother, James Biden. The Washington Post even broke it up for us like this. CEFC, China Energy, paid $3.8 million in consulting fees to Hunter and Jim Biden. What were they doing to earn this money? Nobody knows. It was basically a grease job. These Chinese guys were so shady, American intelligence put one of them under FISA surveillance for bribing African leaders and helping Iran evade U.S. sanctions. When this shady guy, Patrick Ho, got popped by the feds, the Chinese wired Hunter another million bucks. For what? To be his defense attorney. Wait, but Hunter isn't a defense attorney. Well which probably explains why Patrick Ho went to prison. But what was Hunter doing representing a corrupt Chinese foreign national looking down the barrel of bribery charges here in the United States? The Washington Post even confirmed that the Bidens in this Chinese energy firm had a joint bank account together under the name of the company Hudson West 3 where money was flowing in and out to Hunter and Uncle Jim's individual accounts. Huh. 
And they even verified that shiny three-carat diamond that Hunter got from him. Remember that giant rock? They confirmed all that. But, but, they just happened to leave out one thing. The big guy and his ties in all of these deals. They're saying there's no evidence of any of it. Quote, the Post did not find evidence that Joe Biden personally benefited from or knew details about the transactions with CEFC. He didn't personally benefit from it. Hunter was dicing up dirty Chinese money between his bank accounts. We know that Joe and Hunter had joint bank accounts together and that Hunter's business partners were filing Joe's taxes, paying off renovations at his Delaware home and paying for his private phone lines. The laptop gave us all that in 2020. Hunter's even on the record of complaining about paying the big guy's bill. The Washington Post suspiciously didn't report the $6 million in wires from China to Hunter's partner, Rob Walker, in 2017 for consulting that Hunter and his partners did in China in 2015 and 2016, the years Biden happened to be VP. Emails showing Hunter telling his partner to wire him the money in weekly installments. For some reason, the Washington Post was unable to verify those emails. Because if those emails are verified, the president of the United States is in serious trouble. CNN, who finally decided to cover Hunter's federal probe today, brought in their hatchet man, John Harwood, to parrot the same exact talking points pushed by the Washington Post today. Watch. Until you make uh, someone makes a nexus between what Hunter Biden has done and official activities of Vice President Biden or President Biden, it's uh, a not pretty picture, but it's not really uh, of uh, much public import in terms of the policy of the United States or the administration of the government. But so far, there is zero evidence that Vice President Biden or President Biden has done anything wrong in connection with what Hunter Biden has done. No connection. Since CNN and Washington Post are just catching up on the news from 2020, maybe we should point them to what Hunter's former business associate, Tony Bobolinsky, had to say. On May 2nd, 2017, the night before Joe Biden was to appear at the Milken Conference, I was introduced to Joe Biden by Jim Biden and Hunter Biden. At, and at my approximately hour-long meeting with Joe that night, we discussed the Biden's history, the Biden's family business plans with the Chinese, with which he was plainly familiar, at least at a high level. So a former business partner to Hunter confesses that he met with Joe to talk about the Biden family business in China, and the Washington Post and CNN are just acting like that never happened. No connection. Doesn't all this seem a little weird to you? The legacy media didn't bother to cover Hunter's laptop in any serious way for 17 months. But now, all of a sudden, the New York Times, the Washington Post, and CNN are all able to authenticate some elements, just some, found on Hunter's laptop. And isn't it strange that none of them can figure out how to verify any of the evidence that implicates Joe Biden? Hmm, how convenient. The people who called the laptop Russia disinformation now suddenly want you to trust them when they tell you, yeah, Hunter could be in some trouble, but Joe's not the big guy. No 10% for him. They're still denying there was ever smoke while standing in the middle of fire. And it's not just the media. The FBI looks like they're in on it, too. How else would you explain the FBI just miraculously misplacing Hunter's laptop? You are the assistant director of FBI Cyber. I want to know where Hunter Biden's laptop is. Where is it? Sir, I don't know that answer. Now, you're telling me right here is that as the assistant director of FBI Cyber, you don't know where this is after it was turned over to you three years ago. Yes, sir, that's an accurate statement. <laughs> So you have a laptop with damning information on the first family, and no one knows where it is? How's that happen? The FBI was given this laptop 
He gave it three years ago. And now the head guy at FBI Cyber has no idea where it is. Is it in FBI custody? Or is it with the U.S. Attorney's Office in Delaware? Did you guys make a copy of it? This is starting to smell like one giant containment operation. Hunter might be charged, but it's obvious that they're trying to wall off the president from this, keep Joe from being exposed. Either they just don't want the big guy to go down or they want to hold dirt over Biden, use it as leverage, twist his arm so maybe he doesn't run again in 2024. Whatever the reason is, it's clear as day. Joe Biden is compromised. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.